In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with PowerShell Universal. PowerShell Universal is the ultimate platform for building web-based IT tools. You can use PowerShell to develop APIs, automation scripts, and web pages. So in this video, we're actually going to use the PowerShell Universal Visual Studio Code extension to develop a couple things inside Universal and then just run that locally. So if you want to install the extension, just go to the extension pane in Visual Studio and search for PowerShell Universal and install that extension. I also suggest that you install the PowerShell extension so that you have PowerShell language support. Um, so after you install the extension, you're going to have a link on the left-hand side here uh, in the activity pane for PowerShell Universal. And if you click that, it's going to prompt you in the bottom right here to uh, download the latest version. So it's actually going to go out and grab the latest version um, from the internet and uh, extract that locally and then start up the server. So PowerShell Universal is a .NET Core web application that actually hosts PowerShell and allows you to create these APIs, dashboards, um, and scripts. So you can see on the left-hand side here, I have uh, several sections. I have APIs, which we'll get to in a second, uh, dashboards, scripts, configuration, and then help and information. Now that we've downloaded PowerShell Universal, the server is actually starting up. You can see that it's connecting to PowerShell Universal on HTTP localhost 5000. And if we actually click over in our uh, terminal dropdown over here, you'll see that PowerShell Universal is actually started as a terminal. Um, now that we're up and running, you can actually click this Go to Admin Console button, and it's going to open the Admin Console in your web browser. Uh, the Admin Console uh, has a login page, and by default, the username is admin with any password. Once we log in, you're going to see that we have some options in terms of different features of Universal. On the left-hand side, you'll see that we have APIs, automation, which is uh, scripts, jobs, and scheduling, uh, and the dashboards, which allows you to build web pages. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add an API to um, our Universal instance here. And I'm just going to create a user uh, API. And that's going to show us an editor where we can actually edit this user API. So if I click edit here, I can return a hash table from this, and I'm going to return uh, a user named Adam. If I save that, um, now we actually have an API that we can invoke from commands like invoke rest method or even native uh, binaries like curl. So if we go back to Visual Studio Code and go to this API section here, you'll see that I now have this user API available. Um, what I can actually do with that is uh, view the API source code. So uh, one core concept of Universal is that all the configuration is completed with PowerShell scripts. So any changes that you make into uh, in the admin UI are actually reflected inside these PowerShell scripts. And any changes you make in the PowerShell scripts will then be reflected in the UI. So you can actually configure the entire system uh, via code. And you can have repeatable instances of Universal up and running pretty quickly. Um, so as an example of how to invoke this API, what we can actually do is click this uh, insert invoke rest method, and that will actually insert an invoke rest method call into our PowerShell integrated console to execute this particular endpoint. So if I hit enter here, you'll see that it invoked my API endpoint and returned that uh, hash table back to me as um, pretty much an object because uh, we automatically serialize this hash table to JSON and then invoke rest method will automatically deserialize it. So you can do all kinds of things with APIs, so definitely check the docs for that. So now let's take a look at dashboards. So if I click this link here, we can click our manage dashboards button, which will take us over to the dashboards page. If I click Add Dashboard, I'm just going to create a standard dashboard. I'm going to use a base URL of dashboard, which means I'll go to slash dashboard um, to actually view this dashboard. I'm going to use the Universal Dashboard 3 framework. We actually support uh, 2 as well. And I'm going to use PowerShell version 7. So now uh, our dashboard has been added successfully, and it's up and running. And if we click this View button here, it'll actually take us over to the dashboard, and you can see that I have a web page. This web page is defined um, via this PowerShell script here. So you can see here, I'm saying new UD dashboard. Um, I'm putting in some text. And then I have a button that will actually invoke uh, a redirect and take me over to the docs. So uh, as you can imagine, this is actually stored in a PS1 file. So if we actually go over to um, here and click refresh, now you'll see that I have a dashboard. It's up and running. Um, it's running uh, the framework version 3. And I can open the dashboard script in here. 
So one thing you'll notice is that it automatically imported a couple PowerShell modules, and those are the universal dashboard PowerShell modules, and what that enables is the ability to use uh, IntelliSense within um, this particular window. So now you can see that I have my typography uh, text here, and if I wanted to change the type of text, I could switch to variant and maybe set it to an H1. So um, once you make a change, what you can do is you can actually restart the dashboard, and what it's gonna do is uh, restart that process, which the dashboard is running in, which is just PowerShell. And now if I click View, you'll see that it's using the H1 tag for that text instead of the default body tag. So now I can go through and build a completely interactive website using PowerShell script uh, inside my editor here. So uh, Universal Dashboard has tons and tons of components and controls. You can create charts, you can have forms that take input and execute actions. Um, then it's kind of endless in, in terms of the possibilities that you can uh, achieve with uh, Universal Dashboard. Uh, finally, I wanna show off scripts. So scripts are part of the automation um, uh, feature inside PowerShell Universal. And a script is really just a PowerShell script. So if I actually go ahead and just add a script here and go to the script, you'll see that I have the ability to edit this script. I'm just gonna call get process inside my script here. And if I save that and run that, it's gonna allow me to select a PowerShell version to run it in. Uh, but in this case, I'll just run it in the default PowerShell 7 version. And now you can see that it's just running my script inside um, PowerShell Universal. So uh, as you can see here, we have output from get process. Um, so this is uh, actually stored in a, uh, a database that is a local single file database running inside um, your machine. And it's also going to output uh, pipeline output. So since those were uh, objects output from my job, I can actually see the properties of those objects. It's not just gonna output console output, it'll actually output um, these objects as well. So if we go into our Visual Studio Code extension now and we click refresh, you'll see that I have this, uh, this scripts PS1 and I can easily click edit script to pop open that script and then edit the contents of that script uh, directly in VS Code. So I'll be able to execute it and uh, I'll have IntelliSense um, unlike the web UI. Um, finally, I just want to talk a little bit about the different configuration files. Um, so we have this configuration section in here uh, that allow you to configure things like authentication. So for example, if you wanted to change the default admin, you could update this PowerShell script to do so. Um, as well as setting things like new PowerShell versions. So you might want to target uh, a preview version of PowerShell 7.1, you could add that here. Any changes that you make to the configuration file will be reloaded by Universal so that you can start using those options. Additionally, as you can see, everything's stored in this uh, universal folder here. And what we can do with that is um, you can actually create repeatable deployments of universal since all the configuration is actually just PS1 scripts. Stand up a new version of universal in IIS or host it as a Windows service, point the, the directory to where your PS1 files are located, and it'll automatically configure itself and be up and running. So you can have really easily repeatable instances of universal. So in this video, we went through uh, getting started with PowerShell Universal and some of the basic features and how you can use the PowerShell Universal VS Code extension to actually edit your PowerShell uh, Universal configuration. So definitely go out to uh, the Visual Studio Code Marketplace to get PowerShell Universal or download Universal directly from our downloads page on ironmansoftware.com.